News.com.au just put out an article on the biggest financial mistakes 30-somethings make. And I thought this would be a great article to run through in detail and give you my thoughts on. So let's jump into it. So the article talks about the, the biggest investing mistakes 30-somethings make. And your 30s really is a crucial time. Essentially, you've finished up maybe your, your partying lifestyle. You might have just got a job where you're earning just a little bit more money. And you might be actually starting to think about your future. Might be thinking about the fact that you don't actually love your job and don't want to be doing it when you're 70 and 80. So maybe it is time to start investing some money and putting away some money for the future so that your retirement can be a little bit easier. So let's jump into it and see what this, this article has to say. The first point the article talks about is building your saving money, your saving muscle. Your 30s is a decade where getting good at saving is more than half the battle. If you're like most people, in your 20s you probably either weren't earning enough or weren't focused enough to save lots of money. And this is, I think, a really valid point. The 30s is the point where a lot of people start really focusing on their future. But if you can bring this point forward, if you are in your 20s, the earlier you start investing, the earlier you can really see those effects of compound interest and really make, the, make your money work for the longest period of time. So depending on your age, I think the very best time to start investing is yesterday, but it's seen you can't go back in time, start today, start looking at what money you can put aside and start researching where you can put that money to work as it is amazing the effects that compound interest does have over time to really set yourself up for financial freedom. Now moving back into the article, I agree that the that saving is a muscle and it's something that needs to be built up. So learning those spending habits, I think this is a really valid point. Then goes on to talk about building your investing foundation. And the biggest benefit you get from any investment is in the last year you own it, which means that the sooner you get started, the more you'll have at the end. But for the most people, the fear of making a mistake leads them to delay getting started investing. I think this is very true. A lot of people have that fear that they're not gonna put the money in the right place and they're gonna lose it. And that fear of loss outweighs the, the fear of the, the, the benefits of investing. So I think one way to overcome this and overcome that fear that you might have of investing your money into something is to sen essentially do the homework. Follow channels like this channel, give me a follow. Um, follow channels that, that talk about investing do your research on what investments you are comfortable with. The more you start to know something, the more you feel confident in that, that product, that investment category, the, ch the higher the chances you're gonna start putting money into it and putting that money to work. And I think this is a really good point that she raises about the sooner you start, the sooner you, you own the asset at that point in time's value. And that's a big thing about investing. When you, when you buy something today, you lock in the value of that product, that product, that stock, that property at today's prices. And we've seen historically the stock market does continue to trend up. The property market does continue to trend up. So by locking something in at today's prices, you're then able to sell it or release the, the equity and the profits of that at a later price point. Interestingly, the article focuses quite heavily on property. And as you know, I am a very big fan of, fan of real estate. The article talks about, and with property being one of the biggest drivers of wealth, I'll go a step further to say that the most successful people are the ones that get into the property market the soonest, which I completely agree with. Buying property early and as early on in the piece is one of the most common denominators I see about people that are, are financially comfortable in their 40s and their 50s. Those people went and bought property young. Now, I actually had a good friend of mine that I hadn't seen in a while. I ran into him at a barbecue the other day, and he's in his early 40s, but he was telling me just last year he really knuckled down. He ended up working two jobs in order to save the deposit to buy his first property. He started to appreciate the fact that if he ever wanted to, to be somewhat financially free and somewhat retire, he needed to own his own home, and I completely agree with this. So he got in, he worked a second job, he saved his ass off essentially, in order to be able to buy his, his first home. And now he'll be able to pay that property off over 15, 20, 30 years, and he will own that asset outright. And it's gonna make his financial freedom and retirement so much easier than if he just had kept on renting. So he just knuckled down for that one year 
and I really feel that's going to be such a big help for him. So that's a big thing in your 30s. Is it worth sacrificing a moment in time to really just work your ass off, to to invest properly, to set yourself up for, for financial freedom down the track? And I think that's something this article t- touched on really well. Article goes into to super and talks about super. Essentially says that you really shouldn't be too too worried about it at this point in time. Um, talks about making small additional contributions. I agree with that. I think making some small extra contributions to your super is always a, a wise idea. But with that said, I think there's having control over your money. Personally, I see as a, a bigger advantage. So I haven't personally put too much extra money away in my super. I like to be able to control my assets, be it property, be it stocks and have that full control over over my money at the end of the day. The final wrap up of the article basically goes on to say, what you do with your money 30s will dictate the possibilities for you in the future years. So making smart moves here will go a long way. I completely agree with this. Making smart moves in your 30s or even better making smart moves in your 20s will absolutely go a long way to, to creating financial freedom through your 40s, your 50s and your 60s. So think about that next time you're going out there and looking at buying possible liabilities. Maybe you can put that money to work now and see the benefits of that money and have that financial freedom come along a lot sooner. The last thing she speaks about is actually measuring your success. And I very much agree with this. Like anything, like going to the gym, you might jump on the scales, like going on a diet, like doing any sort of work, it's important to be able to look back and measure how much success you've had. So when it comes to investing, make sure you track and measure your results as it will keep you motivated to keep pushing forward and making money into the long run. So that's my take on this news.com article. I think it is pretty basic, but it does cover some really important points. And that is the sooner you can start investing, the better that property is such a good avenue for for people to invest in, especially owning your own home, and the importance of tracking and measuring your results to stay motivated when it comes to investing. If you have enjoyed this video, we put out a heap of content around money, investing, and property on this channel, so make sure you subscribe, and I look forward to talking to you soon.